Basic monitors, engine one, engine two, truck one. You need it at 308 North Puget Street, to Whit Park in to and cross streets of West. Fire doesn't care. Fire doesn't know if you're paid or volunteer. Hold your breath. How long can you hold your breath for when your house is full of smoke? How long can you hang on when your boat's sinking, when you're falling through the ice or you're hanging onto a cliff? We had a fire up the road, five children died. And I loved playing baseball in high school, loved playing baseball, that's all I wanted to do. And that day we went to that fire and did everything we could, but there was nothing we could do. They, that, they was already gone when we got there. Came back and the baseball team was playing baseball, and that's great, baseball's a great thing. But just up the road, this thing happened where you could have helped. And that was the turning point for me that said, you know, sports is a fun thing, but this is life, man, this is real. And if you have an ability to help people, it's wrong not to do it. If you don't help us, we won't be here. Short and sweet, we can't survive. I'm 65 years old, how much longer do you think I'm gonna do this? Most of us are in their 60s, even 70s. We got guys that are in their 70s. How much can I ask them physically to do? You know, it's, it's the reality of the situation and the severity. I don't think people understand the severity of it right now. So, uh, like you just said, post course, follow it through, follow it till you get to the end. My name is Dan Scherer. I'm one of the lieutenants here. And I've been with Trumansburg for almost 10 years. Uh, outside of volunteering here, I own property that I manage. I do some building on the side. And I'm also a father of two kids. When you see us out and about, if we're driving around or if we're actually running a call, I don't think a lot of people understand all the preparation that went into getting ready for that, whatever that is. It's a ton. It's, I mean, I can't even put a number on it, but you know, for, for an hour call, there might be 100 hours of training behind it. My name is Alex Gressov. I'm a lieutenant here at Trumansburg, and I, for full-time job, I work at Ithaca Fire Department. I'm a firefighter there as well. So this week, we had people going through a maze. Our masks had uh, blackouts on, on the masks, so we couldn't see. And we were just walking through, crawling through a, a course with a hand line to guide us. Uh, put our hand on the hand line, and there's certain obstacles that come up. Chris, maintain your pack, maintain your pack, you got it, that's your left strap right there. Move down the stud wall and try to find a bigger opening. We have a pretty rigorous training program here. We require a lot from people, much more than the bare minimum that the state requires, um, because, because we really want, you know, our lives may depend on people's training level and, and we really want to be confident in people's training. has to be time consuming, you have to be trained, otherwise you're gonna get hurt. And that's, there's nothing worse than that. It's, everybody's gotta go home. So if you're not trained, you're gonna hurt yourself or somebody else. We don't want that to happen. We answer any kind of help, any call for help, whatever it is, we'll come. People, we've got people in the elevator in their house, they get stuck, we go help them, we do what we can. We're all neighbors. We all, uh, everybody knows everybody in the town this size, so we all do our part to help each other. How do you balance being a lieutenant in a volunteer fire company right. and also owning a business right. and also having a family? Right. How do you balance all that? Very carefully. Uh, <laughs> and and I, I can't, I'd be lying if I told you it's always a, a good balance. Uh, it does fall out of balance sometimes. and then you have to, you know, you recognize that and you readjust. It is a kind of continuous balancing act, I guess you could say. It's hard to make yourself come sometimes when you know you're not being compensated for it. You know, when you're leaving the dinner table, when you're in the middle of a project at home and you can't clean up really fast and, and just ditch what you're doing. So a lot of people have a tough time committing. It means something a little more to me to volunteer than, than to do it as a career. I love it. You know, as my job, I, I don't feel like I've worked a single day, but uh, volunteering is really closer to my heart because of just my personal experience with my friend and, and how that um, kind of shaped 
why I wanted to join up in the first place. I had a friend actually who died in a fire when I was 16 and that hit home pretty, pretty closely. And I wanted to, uh, the circumstances surrounding his death were, um, were highlighted on the news with particular attention to the firefighters and, and the challenges that the firefighters met. And that was the first time I kind of decided I want to join up and, and make sure that that doesn't, or do my best to make sure that that doesn't happen to anyone else. People who show up the soonest are the ones that are going to save your life. Um, you, you have a heart attack, you don't have a lot of time for somebody. You, don't, you can't wait for an ambulance, a half an hour. So we'll do what we can to keep you alive until they can start moving you and the level of care will go up. But that's, we do what we can do. So minutes matter, there's no doubt about it. You know, everyone's gonna do their best to get there as soon as they can and as safely as they can to help out. But if you're there 20 minutes later, sometimes the emergency is already done. It's just the lack of communication between counties quite often. With different radio systems, different communication protocols. different procedures. Sometimes if a dispatcher doesn't follow the right procedure, he or she doesn't call the right neighboring department. It's not a perfect system. So yeah, that's definitely something that we kind of have to deal with. Um, it's also because we're a volunteer department, we don't have people here ready to jump on fire trucks typically. We have people that live close, they can get to the fire station quickly and get trucks on the road. But that definitely does, you know, present a challenge. In a downslope in volunteer firefighters over the past 20, 30 years now because the training has gone up and moms and dads work. In the old days, dad would go fight fire and mom would stay home with the kids. That's not the way it is anymore. So moms want to be firefighters too and dads are staying home or they're both working to make ends meet and there's no one to stay home to watch the kids and there's no one to stay home when you want to go help fight a fire. To be honest, I think it's really hard and uh, you just do the best you can to try to keep things in check and there have been people that have been really active at times and they've had to sort of dial back and, and walk away for a while and then they'll come back maybe a few years. After that, maybe they won't come back at all, but it's just life, you know, life is like that. So um, those of us who are here right now, we, we're putting in a lot because we can and uh, that may change. And then the idea is that other people will step up. Um, we have a great generation coming up behind us and at some point you do end up having to pass the torch. So you know, that's, that's the hope at least. I don't know. I, I wish I could. Uh, I wish I knew what the magic bullet was that makes people want to join. Because I really don't know. I've been searching my mind for a long time to try and figure out, but I don't know what it is. What What could I say to somebody to say to make them want to be a volunteer firefighter? I don't know. Whatever I've been saying isn't working. Because we're all in trouble. There just is not enough people. Plenty of trucks, not enough people. We need the next generation to step up. Are you gonna do it? Are you gonna do it? Are you gonna volunteer?